Hey guys, it's Drew back with Drew Does Trucks. Uh, just wanted to share an update of a product that I've been using. This is the Hallmaster A-Frame Trailer Jack from Harbor Freight. Um, if you want to know whether or not I recommend it or not, look down at the snow. Um, the top of this completely deformed and broke off of this jack while I was backing up to it yesterday. Um, I bumped it with the truck and it completely failed. So I'm not going to recommend that. Um, those are currently around $50 from Harbor Freight, like $47, bucks, I think. You can definitely get a better jack for the money. Now, what I want to replace that with is this really cool product that I found at my local tractor supply. As with all of my videos, I'm not sponsored. I buy all these products myself at full retail value. Um, this is called The Ultimate Trailer Jack. Future2Solutions.com and I can tell you just by looking at it side by side with these other jacks, you see the amount of weld that's on here. Like all these seams are welded. This is very heavy, heavy wall. Um, so this is actually really cool. Um, I'm gonna zip this Harbor Freight one off and um, I'm gonna drop this Ultimate Trailer Jack in and I'll show you the features it has, which make it so cool. All right, folks, we got that back on. Uh, if you noticed in the time lapse, we started tightening these bolts with a Harbor Freight wrench. This was probably just like a cheap set of wrenches I picked up um, on sale or something, Pittsburgh brand. I could not tighten these bolts any further. I intend that I don't intend this video to be like a Harbor Freight bashing thing, but I just wanted to show this to you. So, because this is so much bigger than a regular jack which is i'll address that in a minute um i could not fit the socket on here so it wouldn't go all the way around these bolts so i had to use a wrench and this wrench if you look is flexing the whole head of the wrench is flexing it's popping off the bolts and it's rounding off the bolt heads so i ran into my garage god this is an old maiden maiden usa craftsman um <sighs> You know, and, and I don't want to spend a ton of time on this, but you can see it has more material at the head. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. But anyway, I was able to use it to continue to tighten these bolts without it flexing off. So we were able to get these bolts tight without rounding the heads off. I just wanted to insert this into this video. Um, I was breaking loose some lug nuts on a one-ton Chevy truck. This is an old school, uh, made in the USA Craftsman socket. Um, I just didn't want you to think I was trashing on Harbor Freight and some of their stuff's okay. Sometimes it works, but these are really good. Um, these are older. I got these at Sears. You can see breaking loose that lug nut. Um, I was using a breaker bar and it split this socket uh, about halfway up the socket. And guess what? Save the day. Um, I couldn't find any of my other sockets. My tools are a mess, but I reached in and I had a... Harbor Freight Pittsburgh Brands half inch uh, socket set. I slipped that on and I just thought for sure I was going to split it if it broke that Craftsman, but lo and behold, it broke the rest of the lugs loose. Um, and those were lugs that were on so tight that my Milwaukee uh, 1400 pound half inch impact didn't get it. So, anyway, sometimes Harbor Freight stuff works out. Um, I just wanted to show that to you. Anyway, um, back to the jack. So this is made in India. It says so right here on the side. Um, the reason this is up on jacks and jack stands is because that Harbor Freight jack had failed. Um, but that's going to give me an opportunity to show you why this is so cool. Um, I hate sitting here and cranking jacks. Especially when you're trying to move them up and down a couple inches. So I saw this on the shelf and I thought, man, that's a, it's a pretty cool innovation. So you grab this handle and slide it up. 
See how the whole jack drops down? And then this locks in. So this, this is locked in with this pin. So I'm gonna put the foot back on real quick and then we will uh, we'll show you what makes this jack so cool. All right, so this handle that we talked about earlier, we pull the safety pin out. So instead of sitting here and having to crank this, um, crank this jack all the way up till that foot is clear to drive down the road, you turn this handle up. That pulls it, disengages that pin. And that's it. That's it. Now, as you can see. You would have to remember that this is like that if you drop your tailgate, which I couldn't drop my tailgate with this trailer anyway, um, because your tailgate would hit the top of this because it sticks up so high. Um, but as you can see, we have plenty of clearance down here to drive. We didn't have to sit there and crank the jack other than just that little bit that was necessary to get it on the ball and then take our weight off the jack. So like I said before, you have the safety pin. You can stick in here when you're driving. Um, if you need to use your jack again, crank it back down, lock it in. This is spring loaded, so it'll click in when it gets to a hole. So if we're going to unhook our trailer, we leave it like this. And just one more time, since I'm sure this is the part of the trailer everybody wants to see, this is how this works. Um, it's got these two ramps here, so you can turn it this way, and it basically locks it out, allows you to lift it up and down to the height you want. Lift it all the way up. Flip this back, and you'll see the springs click that in. And like I said, I I would probably feel pretty comfortable towing without using this safety pin, but um, they do give you the little safety pin. That would be very easy to slip off if you decide you don't want it, because um, it is kind of in the way. Um, kind of surprised they don't do um, they don't do like a little captive lever. You could another a second spring loaded lever. That would be a lot. Easier to use, but since this is already $80, I um, guess they're trying to avoid increasing the cost. So it seems very, very thick wall construction um, all around. Like definitely seems much better built. You can see that it's a nice thick metal. When you compare it to uh, the thickness of some of the other junk that we've used. Um, and the good part about it is uh, it's stronger. So if you look at this Harbor Freight Jack, this failed when it was almost completely out because this is a, a tall trailer uh, and a tall truck. So we had to get that jack all the way down to get it up on the ball. So with this, with this jack, you're never gonna have to do that because the entire jack body, um, the entire jack body comes down. So see, we only have, at the proper height to lift it on this truck, we only have like, you know, 10 inches a, a jack out. So, um, Hopefully this will last a lot longer, especially given the press. I just wanted to show you guys this. It's really cool. I've never seen one before. Um, as for the price, um, $80 at Tractor Supply. But, but that seems like a lot. But hear me out on this. This was my reasoning. It's the only reason I bought it. Um, I had went in to buy the Bulldog brand jack, which is 50... I think it's $57 for the Bulldog brand one. If I had good luck with Bulldog brand jacks, they're good jacks. The Bulldog jack itself was $57. And then it only offers, I think, 14 or 15 inches of stroke, which is not enough to get the ball up here. Like I said, you want it to have, you don't want to be all the way out. That leads it to failure, which is why we broke the last one. Bulldog's extension leg that pins onto the bottom of that, lets it slide up and down, is another $30. So... The Bulldog Jack and the extension leg together are $87, and this was just over $80 at Tractor Supply. So, um, is it better than the Bulldog one with the jack, uh, the extension leg? I can't say. I haven't used it long enough, but it's in the ballpark. Like if you're shopping for something that is adjustable, that offers you this, and that jack, that leg that, uh, the leg the Bulldog offers you have to come down here and manually pull a pin out let the foot drop down reach down with one hand lift the, the foot up stick the other pin in it's it's we've all used that probably we're all familiar with that it's a pain in the butt especially when it's raining when you're working in the mud you got to get down there you got to get both hands on it um 
it's not ideal. So this, you never have to kneel down. You never have to get below your trailer at all. Um, and that is nice. Like I'm standing here, flip my switch, drop it down. It's locked. It's ready to jack. I don't have to get down at all. I don't have to use two hands. I can use one hand if I want to. Um, because you can, you can rotate that cam like this, pull your jack up. And then all you got to do is reach down and flip. They're one-handed, nice and easy. Whoops, did not lock in that time, of course. Um, there we go. I think they definitely, it's really, really cold out, so everything's kind of sticking together. Just, but they could have used a stronger spring to return. Um, again, this is a little awkward to have to come up here and stick that stupid safety pin in. So, anyway, um, that's my review of the ultimate trailer jack from future two solutions um if you're interested in that get it at tractor supply i will post a link in the description um the trailer that we've been working on today this is a dump trailer that i built seven thousand pound dump trailer um not including that jack we've got about six or seven hundred bucks into it been a very very handy thing um so i'll post a link to the build thread on this um you guys can see that up here and also i recently installed a um radio controlled um radio controlled solenoid activation for this so i can dump it and lower it from the cab which is pretty cool so uh the link to that is right here um if you're interested in trailers and diy stuff like this and reviews of other trailer jacks um i've got content on boat trailers i built a fuel tanker trailer to refill my home heating oil tank i built this dump trailer um i completely rebuilt that flatbed trailer there i just got uh, a camper thread where i repack the bearings put new bearings in my camper um tons and tons of trailer content um also work on campers trucks um we're always working on something right here we've got some L ls motors lq4 lm7 we're working on um taking those motors out, parting them out. So um, give me a like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Tons and tons of trailer content. Um, as always, I welcome your comments. Tell me what you like, tell me what you didn't like. And um, busy day, got plenty of other stuff to do. So I will see you guys on the next project.